All right, uh, this is gonna be a, um, a kind of video that I'm just not used to making, which uh, is so obvious when I p turn on the camera. I feel so awkward talking about stuff. Uh, it just doesn't come natural anymore, and I'm just never satisfied with these videos, but I'm gonna do one anyway. <laughs> Um, this is uh, just a, mainly a DVD and Blu-ray update. I'm gonna go through my collection here and um, I've pulled out a lot, you might be able to see, I don't know if you can, but I've pulled out some titles from the shelf, shelves and um, stuff that I bought over the past few months that I haven't uh, gotten around to showing you because I've sort of gotten out of that habit of immediately talking about everything that I buy. Uh, so there's there's definitely a lot of stuff that I that I've just missed or f forgotten about stuff that I I'm sure about and never shown you but I just can't really remember everything honestly uh, but I've I've pulled out some stuff that I know that I haven't shown you although there might be a few a few titles that I actually have shown you before so not much much to do about that but um, so that's really the main part of this video I just want to get some stuff out of the way. I'm also gonna show some random stuff around the, the the apartment, around the room here that I don't think I've shown you before. Some random figures and stuff, just because it's been there in the back of my head for a long a long time now, and I just never got around to showing you that stuff. So I'll do that too. And then I have some piles of stuff here um, that contains titles that I haven't talked about. Like this stuff is mainly stuff that I've seen. Some stuff is unwatched, but for the most part, at least this pile here, that's a bunch of comedy, British and uh, American comedy. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna very quickly go through that in this video too. At least talk about some of that. I was gonna make a separate video about that, but I'm just not gonna get around to doing that. So I'm gonna very very quickly go through all the comedy stuff that I bought. Uh, that sort of tends to happen. I, I mean, I have a wide. Um, interest I suppose or that there's a lot of genres uh, of film and, and stuff that I um, that I'm interested in and sometimes I tend to go kind of crazy with the comedy or I tend to watch a lot of TV stuff uh, on you know I kind of yeah I I, I just uh, I'm, I, I get in different moods and then I do that a lot for a little while and then I I stop doing that and then I I, I feel like watching a lot of horror and I do that a lot so it's sort of like that and um, so at least sometimes and the comedy is a proof of that uh, I've, I've accumulated that over over probably several weeks at least uh, and now it's been sitting there for a long time just waiting for me to talk about them so that I can put them up on the shelf which is an another issue that I'm just briefly gonna touch here like I'm sitting here looking at my collection and there's a lot of stuff that I don't really like do I need to have that movie up here I'm never gonna see it again or do I need Wall Street on DVD do I need that on the shelf Shawshank Redemption on DVD do I really am I, am I ever gonna watch the Shawshank Redemption on, on DVD again probably not there's so many titles here that I could see myself just putting down in the basement and um with all the stuff that I keep buying, I feel like I'm always, whatever I do about space issues, I'm always on the verge of running out of space. It's always so fucking frustrating to <laughs> always have that nagging, like, okay, I need, to do, I need to do something about my collection here, I need to move stuff around, I need to, uh, just, I, I can never <laughs> get that rela relaxing feeling of, oh, it's all sorted. It's all taken care of. It's such a small problem to have, but still. So I, I just, I still don't. I mean, I've lived here for a year and a half now, and I still feel like I haven't figured figured everything out. Uh, I mean, it, it looks a lot better now than it used to do. But um, I think I'm just gonna. I'm, there's there's so much comedy stuff here that's still left from before that I'm never gonna get to. I just don't view stuff like that anymore my viewing habits have changed too, like I, I used to buy a lot of, co of comedy DVDs comedy DVDs years ago, like by the pound for cheap prices um, and watch them obviously 
but now I just I just don't watch comedy movies on DVD anymore. So it's so so hard to decide which ones I wanna still hold on to. Um, most of my comedy viewing right now, well, obviously <laughs> I say that, but I mean obviously I, I bought a lot of comedy a lot of comedy on DVD here, but that's mainly TV shows, some stand up, uh, and stuff like that. Like I'm talking about all these. Hollywood movies or all these uh, comedies with st big stars from the past couple of decades. I still, I mean, I've put, put away a lot of that stuff, but I still have quite a few on display here. And uh, there's just so much I don't... I'm gonna have to just do something about that. And I'm, I'm talking about it now because I was just thinking about maybe I should make a video about that now. Um... I probably won't, but I'm, I'm gonna have to do something about it, uh, whether I make a video about it eventually or not. I'll probably just keep removing stuff from my collection until I'm completely satisfied, and that's gonna take a while. Um, anyway, um, I'm sure I was talking about something and didn't finish, but uh, I, I don't remember what I was saying. Um, but I'm gonna just go through everything here. Um, yeah, just very briefly talk about some stuff that I have yet to talk about. Okay, so I, I did buy, first of all, some Criterions here from uh, Zoom. I bought six of them. I bought Dreams, which I've seen, which was really good by Kurosawa. Really great visuals. This is definitely one that needs to be viewed on Blu-ray. This one I've, I've seen also, Day for Night by Truffaut. Really good movie about filmmaking. Interesting backstory too. Uh, if you read up on this, uh, it seemed to have worsened the um, relationship between Truffaut and uh, Jean-Luc Godard. I'm really not a fan of the new wave, to be honest, the, the French new wave. So I, I've, I've never been that interested in that part of French cinema, which is kind of weird, being a fan of French cinema. I just don't get the new wave, really. I mean, I well, maybe I get it, but I don't really, it's not really my thing. Uh, Only Angels Have Wings, haven't seen this. By the way, these were 2 for 25 at Zoom. Bought them a, bought them a while ago. Uh, here comes Mr. Jordan. And then I have two more down here. Um, Dr. Strangelove, this is open, but I haven't, haven't seen it yet. I have seen the movie before. Uh, and then this one I'm looking forward to getting to, The Life of Oharu by Kenji Misoguchi. Uh, I did have this from before, uh, Sancho the Bailiff, which uh, was great, uh, really good, and I have seen Ugetsu as well by that director, which is also a, a really good movie, so uh, The Life of Oharu. I'm looking forward to getting to that whenever I <laughs> get to it. Um, and on honestly, um, I have no idea if I've shown you this. <laughs> I was just vacuum cleaning. Julia here. This, these are Hellraiser figures. Julia, she's uh, she's completely nude. She doesn't even have skin on, <laughs> but she has a dress here that you can put on her if you want to. And then there are some other pieces, which um, I guess maybe pieces pieces of cloth that you can put on her arms. I don't really remember exactly what it was, but I was vacuum cleaning and I accidentally suctioned them into whatever the vacuum cleaner which is <laughs> pretty funny, but it's also obviously very annoying. Uh, so they're in there. I'm gonna have to slice the bag open if I wanna get them back. So we'll, we'll see if I do that or not. But these Hellraiser figures, figures I bought them this, this... Did I buy them this summer or last summer? No, it can't be last summer. Well, it's been a long time. I don't know when I bought them, but I, I don't know if I've shown you them. But I've had them for a while. I've also had some of these Simpsons plushies that I have up here for a while that I don't think I've shown. I've, sh I've shown some of these for sure, but not all of them. But they're fun to collect. Um, is there anything here? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I don't know if I showed you <laughs> just a, a random purchase from Amazon. I bought a few. I've sold a couple, but I kept one. Uh, they were very cheap. It's a Hell the Hellraiser cube. It doesn't look that good, honestly, uh, on its own like that. But um, 
the more stuff you get and the more you figure out the, uh, the the lighting is really bad by the way but that's a constant problem for me <laughs> um, yeah the more you f the more stuff you get and the more you figure out how to keep stuff on the top of the shelves it, it the better it looks but is there any way it, maybe I can just get my cell phone and uh, find a flashlight okay it's gonna have to be like this um, <laughs> did I show you these well this one is old the one to the left but these two uh, exorcist figures um, pretty cool I bought them a long time ago I don't know if I showed them to you this I don't think I've shown you the David Attenborough uh, tin it's alright I mean it was really cheap and I, I like collecting his stuff so it contains like five different DVDs which I'm not gonna really watch them I'm gonna get them on blu-ray eventually <laughs> and watch them that way but it was cheap and it was uh, just uh, you know a fun a cool box set to keep on display uh, this Monty Python one down five to go I don't think I showed you that I have it al already but I wanted the big edition um, and I also bought this like a year ago probably biggest dickest Monty Python from the <laughs> uh, Life of Brian movie uh, the the dickest is a uh, corkscrew ridiculous but I, I just needed that for some reason <laughs> and I don't think I've shown you this either the Clark Griswold pop pop figure um, and more Monty Python figures here that I bought a while ago too from the Holy Grail um, they had a sale going on a while back uh, Monty Python uh, that's not where I bought these but but um, I bought them from some seller for a pretty good deal but then uh, the actual website Monty Python's official website they had a sale with a bunch of figures that I thought were out of print from a long from long ago you know and they had them all for five pounds and I didn't have the money I mean I, there's a lot that I wanted but I didn't have the money for them and then when I did have the money like a couple days later literally just a couple days later I did have the money and then most of them were sold out uh, the shipping was pretty expensive but I would have been willing to pay a lot of shipping for you know five pounds each for like just so many cool Monty Python figures but um, unfortunately they were sold out I don't think I showed you this uh, I might as well the brain damage pin that came with the movie uh, that Arrow released um, right so now I don't know I'm gonna have to put the phone away because I don't have three hands um, <laughs> but I'm it's gonna have to the, the lighting is gonna have to be bad I'm sorry about that but uh, you know the Sun is going down early these days and I don't have any uh, good lighting in here uh, speaking of David Attenborough, I bought The Hunt and uh, I also bought it's over here Live Story um, there's much more stuff here that I haven't shown you yet but I'm gonna wait until I've seen it uh, so The Hunt and Live Story to uh, David Attenborough shows, I really enjoyed The Hunt uh, Live Story I have a couple episodes left of but I'm not enjoying it quite as much I would say out of all these uh, 21st century um, ultra high definition <laughs> uh, shows that they've done on BBC Earth with Attenborough Live Story might be my least favorite but it's still it's still very good um, and recently I, I talked about a bunch of metal uh, DVDs especially black and death metal that I bought uh, so I just ordered a few more I wanted to beef up the collection with a few more so I got Slayer War at the Warfield. I haven't seen this one yet, but I love Slayer. Well, yeah, I, I, I do. I, I'd say I love Slayer. I'm not I'm not the hugest fan, biggest fan, but I do like them a lot. Uh, Overkill. This one I saw. Overkill is it's, they're, they're a really good thrash metal band, but this DVD I just well, I didn't really enjoy it that much. No particular reason. Um, Opeth Lamentations. Haven't seen this yet, but I do have this from before. Okay, great. Um, live at the Royal Albert Hall, I think it is, yeah. Which is phenomenal. They're a great uh, metal band, Opeth. 
and then this one fell down, My Dying Bride, also new. Uh, I should have seen these live, but uh, I think they had to cancel. I think it was a couple years ago at a festival and the bass player or the guitar guitarist or something had a problem with their passport and so they had to cancel. Um, I got two Halloween DVDs, one of my favorite bands of all time, definitely. Uh, High Live, this one I needed, but but this one I already had actually, but I didn't have the extended, or I mean the limited box set edition. Um, and there was a seller on online who, who had both of those for a really cheap price and free shipping. So I bought them to add this one to the collection, which I didn't have, and to upgrade the regular edition that I had of this to the limited one, because why not? It looks nicer with a box set. And I can just sell my regular edition and get my money back. So I basically got those for free. Uh, and then this one, Led Zeppelin uh, live stuff from early 70s, I think, mainly. Looks really cool. I'll get to that eventually. Let's see if I can get it back in. Uh, then um, we have an Icelandic movie called Rams. Um, maybe I can hold my iPhone in the same hand. Let's see if that works. <laughs> oh man, it's not easy. Huh, how about that? It works. <laughs> I have to be careful not to drop one of them. But Rams, Icelandic movie, actually really good. I really enjoy this. Uh, so that's one that I'd recommend. Uh, this is the foreign section. So this is a Danish movie called Land of Mine in English. Um, maybe I could film with my iPhone and, and that way only need the one, but I, I prefer filming with, filming with the camera because I'm, I'm used to that. Uh, this was good, but um, some elements were a bit underwhelming. Uh, the story is very interesting. But um, this one I showed you, uh, and I'm almost dropping my, my iPhone. <laughs> this one I showed recently in an unboxing, but I watched it two days ago. And it was fucking amazing. Check this. If, if you like uh, prison movies or prison escape movies, if you like another French prison escape movie from only a few years before this called A Man Escaped, then this is one you need to see. Uh, yeah, this was just phenomenal. The attention to detail is it, just so, uh, so just fascinating just watching them escaping from prison. I'm not gonna say if they make it or not, but uh, yeah, really good movie. Uh, one that I bought uh, because of Isabelle Huppert and also because of Mikael Nyqvist who is one of the most famous uh, beloved actors of Sweden and he unfortunately died recently a few months ago which came as a big shock to the whole country really nobody knew he was sick but I think it was lung cancer and they did, did a movie together a few years ago um, this one with Gerard Depardieu um, uh, not my favorite, by the same directors who made this, um, which I thought was quite good, but there was something about this, it, I just couldn't get into it, unfortunately. Uh, this I've shown you a long time ago, but I have now seen it, uh, Silkwood. Uh, it was in these piles. These are basically piles of stuff that I have shown you for the most part, but I haven't seen them yet, uh, and I, do, I just don't know if that stuff is stuff worth holding on to or not. So that's why it's down there uh, until I've seen it. But uh, Silkwood was a good film. Uh, let's see. Moonlight. I was actually a little bit underwhelmed by this. I'm not gonna go all political. Um, but um, it, was, it was a good film. But I, I don't know if it really deserved to win the Oscar. I'm sure most people would, would think so. Uh, it's not all about the Oscars either. But um, I'm not gonna get into it. But it, it, it was a good film, but I was a little bit underwhelmed by it. Uh, I feel like I've talked about this, but I don't, I don't know. I, Daniel Blake, fantastic movie from um, last year, I think, by Ken Loach. Um, the Skeleton Twins. The, uh, and here you, you, you notice, by the way, that these four titles, they're right next to each other. 
which is just because I, I, I don't have any good order when it comes to my drama and my comedy for the most part I just don't know how what to do with that um, so that's why I just put them next to each other but <laughs> uh, Skeleton Twins pretty good uh, Elephant this one I really liked by Gus Van Sant I found this at a flea market or a second hand store and I didn't know anything about it and I didn't know what it was actually about and to me that was actually really effective not knowing what, what was going to happen so it's up to you if you want if you want to look at IMDb I mean it maybe you're supposed to know what it's about before going into it but I didn't and I thought that it was for the better that I didn't so if you don't know what it's about then I I would sort of recommend watching it without knowing but um, anyway let's see louder than bombs found that at a second hand store um, now it's difficult to talk about movies like with Kevin Spacey without bringing up this whole Me Too thing but it, we're gonna try to avoid it uh, The Shipping News uh, by a Swedish director it was actually really good, I really enjoyed that uh, The Normal Heart about the onset of uh, HIV AIDS uh, in the, I guess, early 80s. Pretty good, I would say. HBO film. And I bought this Pollock um, by by and starring Ed Harris, or directed by and starring Ed Harris. Uh, he plays the uh, artist Jackson Pollock. And then another one with uh, Gerard Depardieu, Welcome to New York. This one I liked. Um, I found this at a flea market. Uh, Whiskey Galore is one of these uh, vintage classics. There's a lot of those. Actually, this one is also one of those. That's the first one that I ever bought. And this is the second. This is a comedy. I don't know much about it, but... Uh, anyway. Uh, let's see. Where... Okay, down here we have two. Two more. Uh, Edge of Seventeen. The Meddler, this one I'm not going to hold on to. It's one of those movies that if I, you know, if I'm going to uh, sort the collection out, I mean, if I'm going to get rid of a bunch of stuff, then that's not, not one that I'm going to hold on to because I didn't really care for it. Um, Police Story Lockdown with Jackie Chan. Again, I'm trying to get most of his movies on Blu-ray or at least the ones that, you know, have been released, obviously. Um, let's see. Down here we have... Raw, I might have talked about this, I don't know. Pretty good. I feel like the story of people fainting in the cinemas preceded the movie, and maybe for better or worse, for better or worse, but, it was, you know, if you if, if I'm gonna look past that, it was still a good movie. I bought Wreck 2 on Blu-ray. I actually just watched the first one again for this October, so that's why I bought the second one. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't think... I've shown that yet, maybe I have, I don't know. And then the second one. Uh, I had seen the first one in the cinema. I just bought it again on Blu-ray. I mean, I, I bought it on Blu-ray, watched it again. And then I watched the sequel. Which, uh, you know, I, I guess I prefer the first one. But the, the, the there, there are some problems with the sequel. But when things get going, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and I also bought Doctor Strange, which I also so, also saw in the cinema. Uh, so it's still sealed, not planning on revising it yet. I bought the Babadook really cheap, haven't seen it yet. Um, let's see, there's only one left actually. Uh, Patriot's Day. I really like that actually. Okay, now we get to the comedy and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really really brief here. <sighs> you know, I bought a lot of... UK comedy, Stephen Merchant Live, Journey of the Chil Childman, Mighty Boosh, a lot of um, Rob Brydon stuff, and I've sort of come to the conclusion, I do like Rob Brydon, but I think a lot of his comedy is kind of tame, kind of, you know, he could do a lot more than he, he's doing, uh, he, there's some missed opportunities, and some directions that he takes some stuff in, I'm just like, oh, really, dude? Are you gonna really gonna do that? 
I, I don't know, I, I, I can't really make up my mind if I'm a fan of him or not. Um, baby mom, I don't know why this is here. Um, it is a comedy, so I guess that's why, but it's sort of, sort of out of place. Uh, the Baxter, I haven't seen this yet, but I bought it because it's uh, with the wet, wet hot American summer um, crew. We have that movie here on Blu-ray. And then about Diggers, and they came together, and uh, Stella with the same people. Uh, more Rob Brydon stuff, director's commentary, um, which I haven't seen yet. And then one with him and Julia Davis, Human Remains. This was this was good. I found this Betty Betty White set with a bunch of episodes from two early 1950s uh, sitcoms, which so it was, it was cool to see her in an early. Uh, in early uh, roles like that. Greg Davis live. Uh, Roger and Val have just got in. I, some stuff I buy because they're, they're cheap and I'm, I'm kind of curious to check out a lot of the UK comedy from recent recent years. Burning Love season one. This is also sort of... Uh, I bought that also because of, you know... I mean, basically I watched Wet Hot American Summer last, last year on Netflix and then I bought the Blu-ray now and watched it again and uh, the extras. Then I bought a bunch of the stuff which were either by or with the people who were, were involved in that movie. And uh, Burning Love, it has um, Ken Marino, uh, who was in Wet Hot American Summer. And it also has, um, my, what's his name? I forget his, his name. He's, he's in this, so the name should be easy to find here. Uh, Michael Ian Black, he's in this a little bit too. Um, but I don't know beyond that if it's really by the same people or not. I don't think so, really. The Gumball Rally, this was okay. I've, t I've already shown that, but watched that a while ago. Eagle vs. Shark by Taika Waititi. Uh, you, you'll know him now from Thor Ragnarok. This was quite good. Um, this one I had heard really good things about, but I didn't like it at all. I had to turn it off. An Evening with Kevin Smith. Um, a French comedy. Uh, you can see the original title right there. It was okay. Pretty enjoyable. Uh, a Jeff Garland movie that he made, I Want Someone to Eat Cheese With. Uh, this was quite good. Um, I haven't seen this, but Martin Lawrence, Run Tell That, I think it's called. Yeah. I don't know. Um, two Peter K. live DVDs. I, I tried watching one of these, but I couldn't understand what the fuck he was talking about. <laughs> it was just really hard to understand what he was saying. So I had to turn it off. Um, some Trailer Park Boys, don't legalize it. I'm not going to talk about Trailer Park Boys now, but it is a shame that uh, John Dunsworth died. Uh, I think that's his name. I uh, had no idea he was sick either. I think it was a short illness. So that that's a shame. Uh, Michael McIntyre, this was quite funny, I would say. Um, he's, he's a little bit annoying, but uh, he, he was a funny guy. Uh, Critical Condition with Richard Pryor, uh, it was okay. And then these three that I already mentioned. So just very quickly about some of the comedy. Uh, I'll have to put, put this up on the shelves now. And then here's the Swedish stuff. I've seen most of this too. Uh, I don't know if I should make a video about this. I don't know if I need to. Uh, but a bunch of Swedish Swedish stuff from secondhand stores and online and um, yeah, that's it really. Well, these two are actually Norwegian. Those two. Um, right, I'm done. Um, yeah, um, again, I'm gonna have to. Every time I make an update and I, I'm left with all these titles that I have to put up on the shelf now. I just I'm always dreading that because it's not it's not a fun process. <laughs> um, it should be, but it's it's just not. Um, but anyway, um, all right, that's it. Tell, tell me what you think of whatever I was talking about, and uh, okay, uh, I'll talk to you later.